frequency of binaural beats that appears to bring about improved cognitive functioning at the level of memory, improved reaction times, and improved verbal recall seems to be 40 hertz. Now, is it exactly 40 hertz? We don't know. But if one wants to look up a great reference on this, the reference Colzato, C-O-L-Z-A-T-O et al., 2017, describes, and here I'm, I'm quoting, so this is a direct quote, the present findings are in line with those of a recent study which also found re faster reaction times in participants that listen to binaural beats of 40 hertz. And you can find many examples of this in the literature where binaural beats of about 40 hertz, or exactly 40 hertz in some cases, somehow brought the brain into a state that made it optimal for learning, for memory, and for certain types of recall, including verbal recall, math learning, etc. So for those of you that are interested in binaural beats, uh, there are a number of free apps out there. I'm not going to recommend any in particular. You just have to search for one that, um, that you happen to like. One thing that you will find is that many of those apps superimpose binaural beats onto raindrops or ocean sounds, or that rather they superimpose ocean sounds and raindrops onto the binaural beats, that does not appear to be as effective as pure binaural beats. There has been an exploration of lower frequency binaural beats. So for instance, seven hertz, which is theta binaural beats done for 30 minutes with an overlay of rain sound or rain sounds only, that's been analyzed. And believe it or not, that showed immediate recall memory was significantly decreased. Okay, so that's a negative effect of binaural beats on memory. So the idea that binaural beats are just great for us across the board, I think is wrong. It does appear that the higher frequency binaural beats as one moves up toward 40 hertz are going to be the most beneficial. There are instances in which, for instance, 15 hertz binaural beats increased response accuracy on a spatial verbal memory task. This is a complicated working memory task. Working memory is the kind of memory of remembering a phone number. So if I say, um, for instance, uh, 4932931, and you have to remember that number, keeping it online is what we call your working memory. It's likely that you would forget that two or three days later. You can get improvements in working memory with 15 hertz binaural beats. Whereas the other control conditions, 5 hertz and 10 hertz binaural beats, all decreased accuracy of working memory. However, when I look at the literature and I examined a number of different studies, what I always seem to come back to was that 40 hertz or so, plus or minus 5 hertz, seemed to be optimal for generating improvements in cognition, in math performance, and even in uh, various types of memory recall and even in musical performance. You might wonder, well, how can people do musical performance that are listening to binaural beats? Here's another surprise. Many of the studies that I looked at didn't have people listening to binaural beats while they were doing the tasks, the memory task or the music learning, et cetera. They would do it beforehand for 30 minutes. There were instances in which people were listening to binaural beats during the task. But if you decide to employ binaural beats, I recommend this 40 hertz as a great place to start. I don't recommend doing it for all of your work bouts. I think there's a good reason to believe that you could attenuate to it. But if you are going to try it, you might try it both ways. You might try listening to binaural beats for about 30 minutes while doing something else, and then maybe eating lunch or something of that sort, or taking a walk, and then going into the work bout. Because remember, the moment that you start listening to these binaural beats, the brain doesn't immediately switch into a particular pattern of oscillation or brain waves. It takes some time. Neural circuits, again, take time to engage. The only neural circuits that are going to engage instantly are going to be the ones that are of a sort of reflexive sort, like you step on a sharp object and you have to retract your limb, or you suddenly are stressed by a distressing text message, or you're suddenly delighted about a, a delightful text message. But when it comes to shifting your whole brain state toward optimizing work, it takes a little bit of time. Some of you out there might be craving a little bit more mechanism by which binaural beats can influence things like focus or reduced reaction time. This has actually been explored. This 40 hertz binaural beats pattern seems to have an effect on what's called striatal dopamine. Uh, we have dopamine as a neuromodulator, of course, involved in many things in motivation. It's actually involved in adaptation to light in the retina, something that most people don't know. But it's involved in movement, which is why people with Parkinson's who have a depletion of dopamine neurons actually have movement deficits and so on. But striatal dopamine is closely related to motivation and focus. And 40 hertz 
binaural beats appears to increase striatal dopamine release. And this has actually been measured indirectly by what we call spontaneous blink rate. Now, I've been accused in various Instagram posts and even on this podcast of being a non-blinker, let's call it, or a minimal blinker. And as an important aside, there is no evidence whatsoever that people that don't blink very much are sociopaths or lie. Also, you will hear that people who blink a lot are sociopaths and are lying. There is absolutely no evidence that blink frequency correlates with anything except alertness. Now, longer blinks are associated with less alertness. As we get tired, we tend to blink longer and longer until we take the long blink that is sleep. Well, I guess the long blink would be death, but the long-ish blink would be sleep. But it turns out that the more firing of striatal dopamine neurons that's occurring, the more frequently we blink. And so it is associated with a resetting of our visual window. That's what happens when we blink. And there's a whole relationship between blinking and time perception. 40 hertz binaural beats appears to increase spontaneous blink rates because it increases dopamine transmission in the brainstem and in the striatum in several locations, in fact. And so the way in which these binaural beats set a rhythm in the brain recruits dopamine release. That dopamine release leads to heightened levels of motivation and focus. Why motivation and focus? Well, dopamine is actually the substrate by which epinephrine is made. Dopamine, the molecule, is actually converted into epinephrine, adrenaline. And they work together like close cousins, dopamine and epinephrine, in order to put us on a path of movement, or if we are doing work, of mental movement toward a goal. So that's a little bit of mechanistic meat to explain at least part of the reason why 40 hertz binaural beats can enhance our focus, reduce our reaction times, and improve, indeed, learning and memory.